Today at the National Press Club, Niadol Nyon, lawyer, human rights advocate and the chair of Harmony Alliance. Our study shows that younger women under the age of 30 experience more generalised victimisation, yet they were unlikely or they were, they were less likely than older women to see police as legitimate and trustworthy and more likely to see them as procedurally unjust. It suggests that there's a far more complex story around the sense of belonging and how young people often have to deal with the dilemma of belonging and not belonging at the same time. I remember my mom sitting on the floor of the living room, surrounded by her shopping bags, casually mentioning to me she had just been called a black dog. And her tone was that of someone who has given up all hope of being treated with dignity. And so, as if to sustain herself, she had to see the word black dog as something as normal and as simple as good morning. Discussions about race or racism are seen as biting the hand that fed you. The good, the bad, the embraces and the rejections are all part of the becoming, of becoming Australian. Australian multiculturalism today is still confined within the power structures in which it was fought. It still remains as one group inviting another, often less powerful, to participate in the nation's life. It is not a relationship of equals or of a common endeavor. As an immigrant, an immigrant who is now a citizen, I can assure you I am grateful. But gratefulness is not a basis on which you can build an equal society based on mutual respect. Such an attitude suggests that there are two kinds of Australians, those who came here earlier and those who came here later, and that the first group builds the place and the second came along and reaped the benefits. Multiculturalism is a grand and revolutionary concept, but I think its purpose is really simple. It is to live with each other without the fear of each other. Some of the stories, some of our stories, might have begun far from here, but like I said, we now think this is home. And I remember, for me, when Australia first felt like home, I had landed at Melbourne Telemarine Airport with an Australian passport in hand. And I handed that passport to the immigration uh, officer, and she inspected it and returned to me and said, welcome home. Welcome home. These were the words that marked for me the search or the end of a search of a physical home, but the beginning of a sense of an emerging identity. I was born and raised in refugee camps, which is why it is ter terrifying to stand here, because nothing in my early circumstances would suggest that I'll be here. And war robbed my family of a home in a physical sense, but it did more. On our humanitarian entry visa to Australia, in the place requiring the listing of a name was the word stateless. War had ruthlessly stripped us of the confidence and the hope and the courage to build our lives because we had nowhere, literally no foundations to build them. As a young refugee who once had big and impossible dream and who arrived here with no money and who's the generosity of a, this nation when they were willing to, and a vision of multiculturalism created before she was born made many of our impossible dreams seem real today. So I did a bit of inspirational thinking because I want us to reimagine this country. Thank you very much for listening to me.